This is probably one of the most unhinged bugs of the year for two reasons. The first reason is it allowed the NNSA, not the NSA, the nuclear NSA that controls America's nukes to get hacked. And second, managing a Windows server is one of the most frustrating things I've ever done in my entire life. I've been working on this video for six hours and this video will be maybe 15 minutes long. That's how hard this bullshit is. What was the hack? It was an exploit referred to as tool shell, a SharePoint attack that is under mass exploitation. It all boils down to this curl script here that takes advantage of two exploits that we'll go into live in this video. So basically, if you've ever been to any organization ever, you've probably seen a site like this. This hellhole is known as SharePoint. SharePoint is a place where you can manage your organization, you can upload documents, you can make lists of things to do, you can upload videos, you can make the worst organization you ever want. Uh, but basically, SharePoint is loved and known by a lot of people, in particular, a lot of government organizations, the NNSA being one of them. And so, for example here, I, for you, my lovely audience, installed SharePoint and got it running, which, by the way, did take me six hours, and uh, there's a vulnerability that allows us to arbitrarily hack this. The way it works is basically boiled down to this single curl request. There are two bugs featured in this curl request, and I'll link it down in the description below. But basically, what's happening here is there is this page called Tool Pane that allows you to edit the page, right? You're able to edit parts of the SharePoint page. Now, obviously, editing a SharePoint site is behind authentication. But unfortunately, normally, when you authenticate to a site, you do two things. You log in via a username and a password, the first part. And the second part is the website gives you a session cookie in the form of either a cookie or a JSON web token, etc. And you use that to tell the server, hey, I'm already authenticated. Well, in some web servers, there's also features where they use different headers, like the refer header, for example, to infer previous state. So because you're specifying that the refer of this web request is the signouts.aspx page, the server says, oh, they came from the signout page. That means they were previously authenticated and you can do whatever you want. And because of that, this request, which allows you to edit pages, is bypassable in authentication. You don't have to have a username or a password to get through this. That's bug number one. Bug number two is when you are now able to edit the page, you're able to change the page to have whatever data you want. And some of that data can be in the form of these special objects called scorecards, which can take in Excel data sets. Excel is a piece of code that's written on top of the .NET framework. The .NET framework is this whole bastion of hell that I'm not gonna go into in this video, but part of the data that goes into it is this thing called a compressed data table, okay? The compressed data table is a base64 gzip encoded blob of serialized data. If you've ever done any kind of web app exploitation or other application exploitation, Serializable data is a known place of vulnerability where if you are arbitrarily deserializing user data, you're gonna have a bad time. So one of the examples for this, it's more simple to understand, I think for people, is Python Pickle. If you've written Python code, you've probably encountered Pickle. Pickle is this library in Python that allows you to take a arbitrary amount of data in Python, like a dictionary or an array, and serialize it down to a single string, to put it into a, basically a single piece of text that you can send to other Python programs. Now, as you're probably reading very obviously here, the pickle module is not secure, only unpickle data that you trust. Right, so the problem with serialized data is a lot of times objects have functions in them, right? You are able to take an object and you're able to take the names of associated functions that it runs like constructors, deconstructors, et cetera, and you're able to modify which functions get called in the serialized data. So if you're able to unpickle that data, if you're arbitrarily ingesting user data, that deserialization allows the attacker to control what functions get ran and take control of your server. And that is exactly what is happening here in the uh, scorecard element. Basically, inside this blob is base64 gzip compressed .NET bytecode that is allowing the attacker to edit a component and telling it, hey, by the way, the compressed data table looks like this. And inside that this is arbitrary shellcode effectively that gets ran inside the, uh, the SharePoint server. 
And Microsoft is aware of this, right? Like everyone is aware basically that if you have a binary piece of data that is getting deserialized off the wire, it is expected that that deserialization function is happening behind an authentication wall. You're building this trust boundary that says effectively, okay, people that are able to authenticate to our hellscape, sorry, our SharePoint server are people that we trust. And as a result, we can inherently trust the data that they supply. The issue here is you couple this vulnerability, which is the arbitrary ingestion of .NET bytecode with an authentication bypass, things get pretty hairy, which is pretty much how the NNSA got hacked, supposedly. Now, I did make a SharePoint server to show you guys this, and I did install Kali, and I'm gonna demonstrate the entire thing for you, but temporarily allow me to crash out. It took me way too long to install this, okay? For anyone who's a Windows sysadmin out there, I downloaded Win2K12 and I put Win2K12 in and it's like, oh, sorry, SharePoint only works on Win2K19. And then I installed Win2K19 Core, which is a version of Win2K19 that does not have the GUI because I figured, oh, if there's no GUI, it'll run faster. I'm gonna VM, the VM is just a mess anyway. And I installed Win2K19 Core and SharePoint's like, oh, sorry, actually, um, you need the desktop version of Win2K19 server. Okay, so I downloaded that and then I went to go install SharePoint and then for no reason whatsoever, SharePoint, if you don't have more than one core on your server, will just like silently fail on the install. And because of that, I sat here for like two hours trying to like debug like config files and stuff. And I found some obscure uh, stack overflow thread from like 10 years ago where they're basically like, oh yeah, um, by the way, if you're in VirtualBox, you gotta have two cores. Sorry guys. And I did that and I fixed it. Anyway, so with that being said, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw the exploit here on SharePoint. So this module is a pull request currently that's in pull for the Metasploit framework. I also had to install Kali. I don't like using Kali. I think a lot of the Kali tools are crutches, but this is literally the only POC that I could find online that works. And so, so be it. I'll put this link in the description below so you guys can play with it as well. Uh, but basically what we do here is we do use um, SharePoint that gets us this exploit here. And then we're gonna say set payload is equal to the reverse TCP meterpreter. If you guys don't know Metasploit, basically Metasploit is this framework that hackers use to uh, throw exploits at servers. What makes it really nice is basically if you have exploits, which are like the exploitation of the vulnerability, and then you have payloads, the thing you want to run on the target, Metasploit makes it very easy to couple them together. I can do like show payloads, and because of the way that the interfaces are written in Metasploit, I can use this exploit to run any of these payloads if I want to. I think Meterpreter is like the easiest to interact with from a uh, like showing or like a demo perspective. So I'm gonna use the Meterpreter payload, which basically gives me full control of the remote server, right? Now I do show options here, pretty straightforward stuff. All we have to do is specify the remote host is 10.0.0.3.2, which is the guy over here on the right. That's my SharePoint server. The, the listening port for the SharePoint server is port 80. And then my interpreter re reverse TCP shell is gonna come back on 10.0.0.33 port 4444. Okay, so we run this with exploit, pretty straightforward stuff, guys. This is like, you know, Metasploit 101. And you will see that bada bing, bada boom, we got a interpreter session six back pretty quickly. Uh, what we do have to do is um, migrate our meterpreter process into an active process on Windows so that like we actually are able to see calc get popped when we run it. So we do a migrate, I think I have this in the, the history, migrate to 5008, which is an active uh, instance of Internet Explorer running. So I have IE Explorer up right here. We migrated meterpreter, which is the basically the commanding control that we uploaded into IE Explorer here. And if I do a little execute calc.exe, bada bing, bada boom, we're out here popping calc. And from here, guys, right, the hackers could use this to download their, their malware to, you know, entrench their persistence and all the other cool stuff. I think Microsoft has um, patches out for it. So if you are an active, like, SharePoint admin, like, please go install your patches, obviously. This is one of those bugs that is pretty scary for two reasons. One, SharePoint is so prolific throughout the world. And it's one of those things that you think, like, oh, it has a web page with authentication. So as long as you don't know the password, who cares? But there's an authentication bypass that came out. And then you add that to, oh, and by the way, the authentication bypass allows there to be arbitrary code execution. Oh, and by the way, it's not even code execution that would require like binary exploitation. You don't need to like leak memory. It's just like, hey, here's this blob of data, please go execute it. And then in classic low level fashion, would Rust have fixed this? Uh, four out of 10, three out of 10, right? If Rust has 
a data deserialization library. I don't know of any personally, I don't code that much in like that area of Rust, but like the vulnerability here isn't so much in the memory corruption of SharePoint. It's more that like, hey, there was a trust boundary that got violated by a off bypass. Shit happens. Rust maybe would have fixed this, but like not really, probably. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Sorry for crashing out there, but like I, dude, I love these videos. I love making these, but I, but something about configuring a Windows server for over five hours. I, and I, I have a, this basement is a no windows, like underground room in my house. I'm going a little crazy. Okay. Show me some love in the comments, please. We'll see you later. Goodbye. I love you.